Hi there. Welcome to Fertile Minds. I'm Dr. Iris Wang, specialist obstetrician, gynecologist, and fertility specialist with IVF Australia. Today, I'm going to be explaining how you can prepare yourself for the embryo transfer procedure, as it is a very important day in your IVF treatment. Now, let's get straight into it. So let's talk about how it is done. Um, the embryo transfer procedure is a very straightforward, simple procedure, despite the fact that IVF treatment involves so much technology and is so complicated. So in an embryo transfer procedure, we put the embryo back into the uterus using a very fine catheter, transvaginally via the cervix and then into the middle of the uterus. We also use a transabdominal ultrasound to improve the accuracy of the transfer. That is why we asked you to come with a half-filled bladder because that will help us visualizing the uterus on the ultrasound. Of course, before we get to that point, there's a lot of identification process that goes on because we want to make sure the right embryo goes back to the right patient, right? So we ask you to bring a photo ID to help with that process. And then the first step of checking happens at the desk when you're first checking with the office staff. And then secondly, it will happen in the uh, embryo transfer room with the doctor and the embryologist. And then finally, you will be able to do the ID check on the embryo dish together with your doctor and the scientist via the TV monitor. On the TV monitor, you will also be able to see your embryo being magnified as seen from the embryologist's perspective using the microscope. So that's a, a part that the patient all love. It's really cool to be able to see your embryo. And then from there on, you will be able to see the uh, process happening via the ultrasound. So you can see that this is a very straightforward procedure and it takes about five minutes. There's no pain and there's no need for anesthetics. And of course, when you finish and leave the transfer room, you feel like you're abandoned and you're abandoned for the next 10 to 12 days waiting for the pregnancy test result. So I just want to give you some pointers about what to do. Now, firstly, it's very important whatever your doctor and your fertility nurse have advised you to use, any medication they ask you to use, keep using them, don't forget. Secondly, keep calm. And then the third thing is to help yourself doing that, try and keep yourself busy with projects around the house, keep yourself busy with your work, whatever it is to take your mind off your cycle so you don't keep thinking it and you don't keep overthinking it. And then another very important thing is don't do your home pregnancy test because sometimes the medication we give you can give you erroneous readings. So just wait calmly until the scheduled day of the uh, pregnancy test at the clinic. Now, I think I should also talk about a few things that people often ask about um, and um, maybe debunking some of the myths that we talk about. Um, so let's start with heating and overheating. Now this advice really comes from pregnancy advice. The idea is that a pregnant woman is working very hard to make sure she provides the baby with a good environment to grow. Um, so as part of this healthy growing environment, the temperature has to be stable, the blood flow has to be plentiful to provide for the embryo. And when we overheat, we can get a heat stroke and we dehydrate. So when there's dehydration, uterine perfusion goes down, placental perfusion goes down, and that can potentially affect the pregnancy. So that's where all that pregnancy advice comes from. And of course, people that extend it to people who are trying to get pregnant. So it's not unreasonable. Now, however, we don't actually have any scientific proof as to how hot is too hot. 
and we don't have any information as to the kind of damages overheating can do to a pregnancy or implantation. So in the absence of any scientific proof, we just give you general advice. And the general advice is don't let your body go over 39 degrees Celsius and always drink plenty of fluids uh, to avoid dehydration. Another common myth is about heavy lifting. So this really is a myth. There is no proof whatsoever that heavy lifting causes miscarriages or implantation failure. And a very important thing I want to say is once the embryo is inside the uterus, it is in, it does not fall out. So even if the embryo didn't take, it will be cleared by the body's own scavenger system. Even at that point, embryo still does not fall out. So if you use that same principle, you can see that after the embryo transfer, you don't need to lie down for periods of time. You can just get up and go. And you, need to, you don't need to go home and lie down for days. We want you to keep moving, keep active. As well as using that same principle, you can imagine that after the embryo transfer, it is perfectly okay to go to the bathroom, particularly in view of the fact that we ask you to come with a half full bladder. So after you have the embryo transfer, it is quite important and, and quite necessary and totally safe to go to the bathroom. Okay, and I talked a little bit about exercises. We like you to keep active, have some moderate exercises, but possibly not extremely strenuous exercises. Again, referring to what I said about overheating. Um, now, sometimes after the transfer, there might be a little bit of blood from uh, the instrument and on contact. So this, this is nothing to worry about. Uh, don't panic. Now, we often give you a pad for that purpose. It doesn't mean a tampon is somehow bad for you. It just means sometimes, you know, a lot of times, in fact, you're using um, a vaginal pessaries and topical medication. So it just makes things a bit messy. So we usually just give you a pad to use. And the bleeding will never last for days on end. Okay, so finally, I think I need to address a very common question about acupuncture. Now, there is no scientific proof acupuncture before or after transfer will improve your pregnancy rate after IVF treatment. But there is good evidence that um, acupuncture helps with mental well-being and certainly helps reduce stress level and anxiety levels associated with an IVF cycle. So if you find that helps you, by all means, go ahead. Because there's no proof that acupuncture is harmful to your IVF cycle. Okay, just want to recap. We talked a bit about what embryo transfer involves, and we also talked about how to look after yourself after the embryo transfer, and we also talked about some of the myths that surround the embryo transfer. I certainly hope that you found this video helpful. Um, do remember, you all have your own individual circumstances and you should talk to your, your own doctor who know your full history. Do leave us questions and comments and do subscribe to our channel so you can see other videos on fertility and fertility treatment. For now, it is goodbye until next time.